Hey y'all, um, I'm back and we are working in GRD, um, no I'm sorry, GR270 in the textbook Working with Patterns and Brushes. Um, and um, in this um, example I am going to work through the Creating a Patter, Pattern Swatch Starry Night. And so the first thing of course that you want to do is make sure Adobe Illustrator is activated. And it is. And then we are going to get rid of some of this stuff so I can see what's going on. And we're going to do a file and open. And we are opening up our data six, um, or our chapter six data files. So hopefully you have downloaded those and um, have access to them. And let's see, where are we here? GR270. Okay, I didn't unzip that, so I'm going to have to go back out this way and extract those files. I won't make you sit through that. I will be back in just a moment. Okay, I'm back and we're going to try that again. I should have the files extracted now. We're going to do a file and open and we're looking looking for AI6-1. which I know it's here. We just did it. Here we go. And click open. And I'm going to bring that over here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so we can uh, see both the textbook as well as the um, document, Illustrator document in my file. Just a little bit narrower. Then we're going to do a command or control zero, or I'm sorry, no, zero, to fit that in our, our in my document window. Then we're going to do a file and save as. Didn't need to be a copy, but it is, so that's no problem. Um, wait a minute here. Let's quit that. Okay, here we go. And this is supposed to be starry night, right? Underscore your name. Slow start, but I promise it won't last long. <laughs> All right, here we go. Great. Now we are it's opened and saved. And of course, I have to go out and open my ah, other file. position it. Now we can get to the meat of the matter here which is to position the 10 stars randomly over the black box. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to get the selection key tool. I'm just going to click and drag these randomly. Okay, so I would not leave it like that. I've got too many, <laughs> too many in a consistently, um, oh, I guess, aligned space. I want to break up some of these bigger ones and bring in some of these smaller ones. Um, oh well, whatever. So we are you randomly position those uh, over the black box. And then we are going to change the fill color of the stars to white. So um, the way that I do that is to just select one of the stars and then I go up to select, same, fill color. And you'll see that now all of the stars are selected and that makes it a lot easier for me 
to change that fill color now to white. And there we go. And you want to compare your screen to figure 8 or mine on the 8 in your textbook or mine on the screen. Now this is the artwork that's going to be used as a pattern tile and I'm going to make the assumption that this is a one inch square. Remember if you remember um, reading that earlier. I'm going to show the rulers. And you'll see it's one inch by one inch, which is exactly what it is. Perfect. All right, now we're going to group the white stars. So you're going to shift, uh, hold down your shift and select each one of the stars. Do you see how I accidentally chose that background too? Um, and I'll do that. I see I accidentally clicked on the background before and then while my shift key is still held I click right on the edge of that square and that deselects it. Uh, if you select, if you click something that's already selected holding down your shift key that will deselect it. So now I have them all selected then you do a command if you're on a Mac or control if you're on a PC, G, to group those. And what that means then is you can select one, two, or all of them easily with your black selection tool. All right, so now we're going to select all. And I don't want to get those... Um, uh, the guides that I just made to make sure that that's an inch into my pattern. So I'm going to delete those real quickly. And again, I'm going to select all. And you can just click, drag, and drop it um, into the swatches panel. So I've got click to hold it, drag, and you see that that little plus sign comes up, and I dr uh, drug it and it automatically recognizes it as a um, new pattern swatch. Now we're going to double click the pattern swatch in the pat panel. And of course that doesn't allow me to do that because my double clicking is not working. I know I complain about that, whine about that all the time. Okay, so we are going to pull up that swatch option. Double clicking is not working here. I'll be back as soon as I figure out how to access the options panel without having the ability to double click. I'll be right back. All right, I have given up getting the um, the panel options by double clicking. I thought maybe I could try it one more time to get it fixed. So if you have that uh, new pattern swatch highlighted and then go over here to um, either swatch options or new swatch, both bring up the same option. So we are going to call this the uh, Starry Night. go. And there it is, Starry Night. So now we're going to delete all of the artwork on the artboard. So you're going to get the selection tool, click and drag an imaginary rectangle over that and hit delete. And then we're going to create a circle that's four inches in diameter. So we're going to look for the circle which is actually the ellipse underneath the rectangle tool or L is the quick key. When you click once that brings up the dialog box for the um, circle or the ellipse and we are going to make it four inches by four inches and click OK. And you'll see in mine um, the, uh, the um, because the pattern swatch is selected in my fill 
um, or in the swatches panel, when I create the ellipse, it automatically uh, fills it with that pat with that pattern. Now, if I were, I now have that deselected in my swatches panel. If I create another one, it's going to fill because I have it in the fill color. I have it here. So let's just try to and you'll see um, what I did was I um, swapped fill and stroke which I can do that again and when I have uh, do the swatch with the fill color it obviously fills that small ellipse with the pattern that we've just created. Illustrator did not use to do this, but if I switch that out now, it will also fill the stroke with the pattern. It was that used to be not an option, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, and I get just get nutty over this kind of stuff. I'm going to bring up that stroke and I'm going to increase the stroke size to 18 points. And then if I actually wanted to, uh, to do a little bit more with it or mess with it a little bit more, I could, I could, um, rather than make that a stroke, I could outline it, go to object, um, outline stroke under path, and now that's a path, but it's still filled with a nice um, pattern. All right, so um, this is the artwork that's applied to the pattern fill based on how I created it. Um, we are going to um, go on to transform a pattern filled object. We're going to select the circle and then we're going to double click. Oh, here's that hated double click again. The scale tool. If I just press return, it will um, scale it. Now we're going to type, um, if, I type if I click on my artboard once, press return, it does the same thing as double clicking. So if you hear all that noise going on in the background, that's why. All right, so we've selected the circle, double clicked or in other, in other ways, got the option, uh, scale box option um, panel to come up. Then we're going to type 50 in the scale uniform text box. That would be 50%. Verify that only the transform objects checkbox is checked in the options section. And then click OK. And you'll see that the object is scaled 50%, but the pattern was not scaled, was it? I couldn't tell if it was or not. <laughs> okay, so let's undo it so I actually look at it. Yes, that's correct. The pattern was not scaled, just the image or the circle itself. Now we're going to drag and, uh, drag and drop a copy of above the original circle. So we've got that copied or we've got that selected. In order to copy it, we want to hold down the option key and then you're going to click and drag and it says above it so we can see that a little bit better. So um, it's an option and you'll see if that's selected. It's option will give you that little double headed arrow on a Mac. If you're on a PC you want to hold down your Alt key. Alright now we're again going to double click the scale tool and this time we are going to type 200 in the scale uniform text box. We're going to verify that only the transform pattern checkbox is checked. And then click OK. And you'll see that the pattern itself is scaled 200%. The object, however, is not scaled. And your screen should resemble figure 10 or mine on the screen. All right, we are going to create a pattern using open paths when I come back, but I think I've probably taken up enough time on this one now. I'll upload this 
and we'll come back and do the next one. See you in a few.